Now, while they're closing, John's devoting primary attention to the docking target that's in the upper left of your screen there, keeping that standoff cross superimposed on the back cross so he has the correct alignment. Now, the probe which you see there is extended 10 inches, so we can mate that into the drogue, which is part of the lunar module, which will firmly attach the two vehicles together. This will be what we call our soft docking configuration, because at that time, the two vehicles will still, the docking rings will be physically 10 inches apart when we're in soft docking. You say Young is flying it at this point. Uh, it's not an automatic procedure. It's something he has to feel himself. Uh, this is strictly uh, eyeball by the pilot, and it's very similar to flying formation in airplanes. Now, we're moving in. We're just about at the, at the contact position, and as the probe enters the drogue, the three capture latches will engage, and we're now in a soft dock condition, as you can see. The docking rings are still 10 inches apart. Now, at this point, John will final line the attitude of the vehicles, and he's then ready to retract the, the probe, bring it in that 10 inches, which will pull the two vehicles together. And he does this in the command module by taking this switch, selecting it to retract, then selecting one of the nitrogen bottles, which puts 5,000 pounds of nitrogen to the other side of the, of the piston in the uh, probe and pulls it back. And if it pulls it back, it brings the the lunar module with it. Now, as the lunar, as the docking rings come together, the 12 latches are automatically actuated, and these two annunciators on the panel go from barber pole to gray, indicating that at least six of the docking latches have automatically actuated. And inside the spacecraft, the astronauts will not only feel the impact of coming together with them, but they'll hear it, too. That's right. When these 12 docking latches are automatically actuated, there's a, a fairly large bang in the, in the cockpit because there's a lot of energy stored in the, uh, in the docking latches. And how many of the 12 have to work, Leo? Well, all we really need are any three 120 degrees apart, but on Apollo 9, in the, both the dockings Apollo 9 made, all 12 of the latches actuated automatically and properly latched both times. And, of course, if they do, any three 120 degrees apart or more, and Leo expects that all of them will work, as he told me they would and did last time. Then they're ready for the next step on the voyage to the moon. Walter? We just heard that uh, Young <clears throat> has moved from the center couch, uh, which, as you pointed out a moment ago, Leo, was his position for the blast-off, over into the left-hand seat, into the commander's seat there on the left where Tom Stafford sat for blast off. Stafford's now in the center couch and Young is over there flying the spacecraft and getting ready for the transposition and that docking. The ground just a moment ago uh, said uh, that uh, to, the, to the spacecraft we have AOS now until LOS at the moon. There's no backing out now. That meant that they have acquired the signal from uh, the, the spacecraft to one of the three uh, deep uh, space network stations at either Goldstone, California, Madrid, or uh, in Australia. And uh, they, they will now have constant communication until the spacecraft disappears on the far side of the moon on next Wednesday. It's uh, back on that side of the moon about 45 minutes after, out of every uh, two-hour orbit of the moon. So it'll be uh, out of contact uh, some 32 times in the three days the men will be around the moon before they come back home. 32 revolutions of the moon, and they're out of touch for 45 minutes each time. Nelson Benton and Scott McLeod are at Grumman Aircraft in Bethpage, Long Island, and uh, they're in the lunar module mock-up out there, but of course there's nobody in it out in space right now. Just what is the position of the lunar module right now, gentlemen? Uh, Walter, as you say, we're here, but that one up there is unoccupied. Scott, uh, uh, it's a passive limb, the one up there right now. What, what is its situation in the cockpit? Well, they have checked the cockpit prior to takeoff, and right now just about all systems are powered down, and as you point out, it's passive. Well, wh when was the last time that, uh, that Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan, under what circumstances did they last see the interior of this, uh, this limb that they're going to fly? Well, the really the last opportunity that they had to be inside the limb and actuate all of the subsystems within it and check all of the different storables that they have was in the altitude chamber, that's a vacuum chamber, down at the Cape. That was before they put it in the stack with yes. all the launch vehicles. Uh, they have been in subsequent to then, but that was really the last time they had a good opportunity to look at it. Before they fired this morning, I guess the last people in 
were the backup crew, and they checked to make sure that as we discussed before, there will be no surprises when the crew crawls in. If there are some surprises, that initial trip by Cernan to check everything out should take care of them. Yes, that's true. Walter? When the ground advised the spacecraft a moment ago that they had acquired the signal from uh, deep... Uh, the uh, men from the spacecraft said, play us our favorite song, Fly Me someplace or other. Couldn't remember the name of the moon. However, they're on the way now. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. It's a solemn moment for us at Western Electric when it's time to retire old telephones and equipment from service. The average Bell telephone, after all, is made to serve for years and years, with few or no complaints. But when its number is up, it has to go. And what will become of it now? In a way, it keeps on serving you because the valuable zinc and copper taken from old telephones and equipment help hold down the cost of your telephone service. Old telephones never die. Western Electric, we make Bell telephones. We also make sure they keep on serving you long after the last ring is heard. Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell system. We've just had the first encouraging word that that television color picture from space, which we're expecting in, uh, oh, maybe four minutes from now, uh, is, uh, is likely to be as good as everybody said it was going to be. We're just got our fingers crossed for that one. But uh, Cernan reported to the ground just a moment ago that he'd turned the television on and could see it on his monitor there. They're not transmitting to the ground yet, but on the monitor he said, Charlie, it's beautiful closed circuit. So uh, we're hopeful. The transmission's as good as the closed circuit picture you can see on the monitor. We're in for some sensational pictures from space this afternoon. That transp transposition, according to a new timeline we got, a little few seconds later than uh, had been uh, scheduled on the original flight plan, comes at 3.49 instead of 3.48 in a few seconds. Uh, that uh, is uh, 3.49 Eastern Daylight Time, of course, and that's just four minutes uh, from now. Uh, the uh, docking at 3.59, 10 minutes later. The lunar module ejection, when it leaves the uh, actual, uh, uh, the third stage, uh, is at 4.58, and then the third stage itself uh, separates, drops away at uh, 5.17 p.m. this afternoon, all those times, Eastern Daylight. As this Apollo 10 now is on the way to the moon, with the successful launch, the successful firing of its third stage to go into this translunar trajectory, right over here, not very many feet from us at our uh, CBS News Space Center, at the uh, Kennedy Space Center, at the Vehicle Assembly Building. They're putting the final touches in the Vehicle Assembly Building to the Saturn V rocket of Apollo 11. And George Herman is over there where Apollo 11 is getting ready to roll out to take man for his first landing on the moon. George? Building ready to roll out on the pad next Wednesday. If all goes well with Apollo 10, if all the tests that have been conducted on this Apollo 11 for the past six weeks are all according to schedule, all check out perfectly, this is the rocket which hopefully will land the first men on the surface of the moon. This is the rocket which will carry men out into space, not for the first time around the moon, but finally to touch, to sample, to see the exact mysteries of the moon, to find out what, if anything, is there that we have not so far seen. This huge vehicle assembly building could hold four of these rockets. At the moment, it holds only this one and a small part of Apollo 12 a symbol of what has happened to our space program since the Vietnam War. At one time, it was hoped that this enormous building could hold rockets enough to launch one a week, perhaps one every two weeks, in a giant schedule. Now, only one rocket every three months. A great slowdown. Walter? Well, it's quite a slowdown, George, but uh, still it goes forward, and it's uh, really hardly the day uh, for rain on the parade uh, of the Apollo missions. This is the day that we 
got the Apollo 10 on the way, the dress rehearsal, to take a look at the landing site for the July landing. And then, while the schedule is lower than it was expected to be at one time, it does provide for uh, four or five more moon missions, perhaps. But that's the end of the space program, uh, as far as uh, exploration of other planets go, and more, until more funds come along, and the pipeline is indeed drying up, and there's going to be a delay before we can mount another lunar landing or deep space probe. What we move into next, the next phase, is uh, Earth orbital machinery, Earth orbiting space stations, and there is a plan to uh, do a lot of that in the 1970s. But so far, when the Apollo program ends after four or five missions to the moon, that uh, will be the end of our uh, planetary exploration for a while. The Apollo 10 is on the way to the moon, as we have reported. Translunar injection has taken place. 